Happy Thanksgiving, Coach. Mm, beautiful day. <laughs> it, it was a beautiful day. <laughs> it was a beautiful day today, and it will be tomorrow, at least here in Nashville. Are you still here in Nashville? I am. Yeah, I am. I, I made the decision to uh, elongate my Christmas break rather than make two shorter ones. So. Ah. Well, so what are you doing for Thanksgiving? Uh, hanging out in the neighborhood with some friends, probably. Okay. I always right, got well. that option. That's always nice. That's always nice. So, I uh, took a peek into Training Peaks today. Yeah? What'd you seems like It seems like somebody's on the consistency train here. Yeah, man. Uh, I've been... Uh, I, uh, it's been great because it's been uh, hoop season, so I got the trainer mm-hmm. set up, and uh, I think I've made a note in there that I'm just trying to get my saddle power up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I noticed that. <laughs> And it's working, I got to tell you. I mean, you know, saddle time is a real thing. It is. It is definitely a real thing. And uh, saddle time on the trainer is uh, is multiplied versus what it feels like to be on the actually outside and riding. So, yeah. Uh, so, I've been uh, knocking out some uh, hour 30 minute type rides uh, pretty consistently just to, and it just fits with my uh, basketball viewing and. Uh, mm-hmm. Um, and I haven't been doing anything crazy on there, but like I said, I just feel like the more I'm on there, the more that it feels comfortable, and that's mm-hmm. a huge step for yeah. me. But I also noticed that I think I did like four hour and a half rides over the course of five days or something like that. Jeez. And I know. And But you know what it, what, it, what dawned on me that, boy, you know, that wasn't like, it wasn't super hard, but it wasn't super easy to to do that. And that's basically... Six hours, which is an Ironman ride. I mean, it's, I, I just started going. That just kind of puts it in perspective, uh, you know, what you need to be capable of. Mm, that's uh, that's definitely more bike volume than I've put in the last week. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I'm keeping things short right now and running a ton. But, yeah, that's a, it was good. it's good to see. Good to see a lot of green in there. Yeah, yeah. I've been kind of uh, customizing it a little bit. But yeah, well, hey, there's nothing wrong with that. Did you... Ride the trainer while you watch the balls today? No, because uh, I I haven't put it in there today. But I, I added another ride last night. So, jeez, dude. Yeah, I think <laughs> my body's saying, "All right, dude, back her down just a hair." I might run in the morning with this uh, Thanksgiving morning run. So I'm taking today easy so far. But no, I didn't watch the balls. But I I I mean, I watched the balls, but I didn't ride during it. I saw the gotcha. end. Like, huge win. Big win. Those are early season last year. Those are games that we would lose by two or three instead of win. Mm. And uh, we have, I'm telling you what, man, we have a really good team. Uh, really athletic and fairly disciplined. Mm-hmm. Um, Rick Barnes has actually done a really good job with our program quietly the last uh, two years. And we're not, we're not the longest team, but they play hard uh, and they play hard on defense. And we actually have some, uh, some decent scoring uh, ability, so it'll be interesting to see how we how we do. And um, these early season tournaments are always good for us as a test. And so before we get into the, into the wide wide variety of SEC play with um, playing a really really good team or a really really crappy team, right? Uh, basically the next day. And so, well, um, but I mean, yeah. you beat Purdue today, and Purdue's been getting a lot of praise. They've he's They've got a lot of veterans back. They oh, they know. got a, they're like all we're all freshmen and sophomores, and they're like all seniors basically. Yeah, uh, and they got that guy that's a giant too. They got two um, giants, man. Yeah, I know. So which is great for nice. us because we we're like super usually super short, but yeah. that dude is so big. He seems like a cartoon character. I know he's a giant. They don't make him like that anymore. No, uh, at least with any kind of uh, um, coordination. Um, yeah, oh. he's a. Uh, He's pretty. He's pretty solid. Well, what I thought was interesting is that what the uh, Tennessee, like Purdue, has these huge guys in the front court, and that Tennessee took it right at them, which is kind mm-hmm. of a, uh, sort of the anti uh, approach a lot of people yes. would think. But I mean, that just goes to show you that uh, you know it's almost like in football how the uh, you run right at the strength of the defense and try mm-hmm. and run away from it because. When you go right at them, it's like they, you know, they're in their own little box. They can't do as much as they might normally be able to do if you're right up in their chest. So yeah, well, I think we'll, we'll get off basketball in a second. But we, yeah, the, uh, the reason we do that is because we we're not as tall, but we have we're 
for we're pretty good at rebounding for being such a short team and so taking for basically forcing at least him out or one or two of them out of there where they can just kind of either you know um be real rangy and and block other people you're gonna make at least take him out and then hopefully crash the boards and get a follow-up and reload we're usually pretty good at second chance points but uh like i said rick barnes has done a, a really a really really good job with our team and i'm actually pretty excited to watch him watch him play this year yeah that's good i'm glad somebody is i'm just uh, <laughs> i'm in uncomfortable territory or unfamiliar territory here we've uh, lost three games in a row yeah i saw um, that but uh like there's you still said much earlier to be thankful for there's a lot to be thankful for they've got they we had three freshmen on the court at one time that has like never happened in our history and Seriously. they've been in every game to the end, like the last couple of minutes, and they've just made a couple of stupid plays. And they've they've all been top twenty teams. So uh, they w- you guys won't make those in in um, February, March, or April. So. Yeah, I, I, it's, it's kind of what I'm hoping. I'm looking for upward trends here, kind of like what we like to do and uh, take a step back, look at the big picture, like you like to do as a coach, and see what's really happening versus not what happened just today. Yeah, well, you got sometimes. Well, I mean, listen. Sometimes in in training, it's um, and I have to, I have, almost have to have this conversation daily. Is that you know, don't pick. You can't just pick one. Sometimes, like it's my job to see the forest and the tree, but a lot of times with athletes, they only see the tree or they only see the forest, and they can't imagine it being anything different. Um, you know, it's just it's that it's that prisoner of the moment you know, mentality. And, you know, I think that when you, the, the more you do that and the reason you do that a lot of times is it's just because of pressure, you know, you, you're so obsessed with one thing or one metric or one benchmark or one PR that you lose sight of, um, you know, the forest and, and how you got there. And, and, and also that not every tree in the forest is perfect you know and i think you know this time of year especially and obviously with it being thanksgiving you know it's one of the one of the you know kind of biggest um differences that i see and have in athletes is that they have the ability to move on quickly from a workout and not let it um you know not they don't become their workout whether it's a great one, you know, or a really, really poor one, they do it more as a, you know, this isn't who I am. I was good today or I was bad today. I know I can try again tomorrow and let's just see what happens. You know, so they, they are in a really good headspace. They're, they have that, um, you know, like we talk about them. The podcast called Racing with Gratitude, I think, or or uh, Ross was talked about that, and um, but you know it's it's uh, listen, it's a cold time of year, it's a hard time of year for a lot of people, and I think this is for as a coach, this is where the, the mo- you know even though most of my job is mostly psychology, this is the time of year where it is just like all psychology, um, you know, getting people out the door, and you know, and then. Also, letting the, let, telling them it's actually okay to be in a rut, you know, like to to be in a funk, to be, um, you know, frustrated or or not motivated. Because listen, you're not going to be motivated year round. You just can't be, you know. So it's kind of just giving yourself a little bit of grace and, and latitude to get you know get in these funks and then realize that just because you're in one now doesn't mean your year is ruined doesn't mean that um you know you're not going to have a great season but at the same time it's also you know it's not something you want to get comfortable with you don't want to become your rut it's just a a, you know it's just a divot in the valley or a or a bump in the road isn't that the hardest thing though man like if you don't feel good or you're like you're, you're sick or you're in that rut or whatever it is just to snap out of that is like one of the trickiest things but i think it's sort of the same deal where you um, consistently just move in the right direction. And I mean, you can't just flip a switch usually. I mean, some people will claim that you can kind of flip a switch on that and, um, you know, change your attitude like immediately. And I, I think there's some merit to that, but 
in the funk world of triathlon, it is really about taking baby steps just to kind of get out of it. And it's sort of like appreciating um, that process of coming through that as well. I mean, that's not mm-hmm. easy to do. Um, and, you mean I can't be happy all the time, though? Is that what you're <laughs> no, telling man, me? Like all the time? Not possible. Not possible. Um, but and that's the thing is like I think that you, you know, again, like we go back to um, – you know, to kind of go back to the uh, the thankful and the you know the gratitude, um, you know, aspect. But it's like, you know, we if you're even able to do this sport, things are pretty good. Yeah. You know, like, and you know, I think one of the great things that you know we've been doing in our our closed athlete group is you know people sharing their personal stories, you know, about how they got into triathlon and then their life before that you know, what it looked like, where they are now. Um, and it's like, you, how can you not be, you know, you know, grateful? Um, you know, I used this term the, uh, earlier this week, and I said, you know, um, burdens and blessings are not mutually exclusive. Hmm. And, and I think that that is so much of m- most people. I mean, there's listen. There's, you know, we've had a lot of people on the podcast, and uh, a lot of people we know, and I'll have a have a, you know, I don't want to say a dark past, but we've all gone through dark times. You know, I think some of them are just, you know, darker than others. But you know, it's you know, it's that's always in the eye of the beholder. You know, the person who experienced it, it may seem, you know, one scenario might seem horrific and terrible to one person, you know, and the other person might think, oh, well, that's not, you know, terrible compared to ours. But, you know, you've always said it before. It's like, you know, don't judge someone because you have no idea what they're going through or where they're going. Mm-hmm. And But if you, you know, that's why this sport is so great is that it it's often becomes a safe haven, you know, and it should always stay that way, where you welcome people in from different backgrounds, different financial statuses, different shapes, sizes, colors, whatever. But it's like if we're able to do this and we can use it as a – and we have the opportunity to use it as an outlet or use it as a, a means to meet people or to get fit or get – like, it at least means we may not be where we want to be, but at least we've made the choice to try to get there. And although that journey might not be perfect, and it might have down seasons, it might have down weeks, it might have down races, you're going to have more of the good if you at least keep doing it. You know, and I think that's what that's we get lost in that so often. Um, you know, especially when you you get into the sport or you get in, or you get into anything new. It's just you, know, you get you go through like just like with relationship, you go through like that infatuation stage where everything is awesome, and I'm just you know. I'm just grinding it out and, and you know, this is this and I'm just pounding. And then like, listen, they're not always going to be like that. <laughs> you know, I wish I could tell you they were. Mm-hmm. And I wish I could tell you, you weren't going to take like months off where you just wanted to give up and you question quitting altogether, but you're going to have them. And you know, the, the, the biggest thing you can do is just look back and think, listen, if I can even do this, then things are pretty good. Yeah. You know, or or at least I have the opportunity for them to get better, and that's really all we can ask in life. And any, in my opinion, is is to give ourselves an opportunity for things to get better, and that's a personal choice that we make. And it really, rarely, um, you know, is anybody responsible for our own happiness. Yeah, I mean, and I think to um, almost forgive yourself uh, for feeling that way too, because. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it's so easy to like look down on yourself or whatever. And I was talking to one of our athletes today on the phone, actually, and we were talking about how how he's approaching his life different because of uh, like he's just thinking about patience more and being consistent and how that sort of has a way of working itself out in the long run. And I always have to be reminded of that because I think it, you know, at all stages of life and all stages of triathlon, you can get into the similar type of funk just in a different place um you know was with relation to um you know me doing multiple ironman now and it can it, like that that initial high and shiny object of different phases can really carry you into the next step but then you're if you're not approaching it the right way 
you're just going to kind of end up in the same place and have to look for something new. But mm -hmm. and that, I think that's always the trap, at least for me, is like uh, um, I'll have to, uh, you know, I look for external motivation or whatever instead of just mm -hmm. being able to fit. How great it is to like, you know, five years ago I couldn't run, you know, a couple miles or whatever. Now any given day of the week I could go out and like throw down five or six and know that I could go a lot further. I mean, right. how do you keep an eye on that? You know, that that's the thing that has to be. I think it's that gratitude and that reminding yourself of, of being grateful or that kind of being able to do that and how you keep that sort of in, as your center focus is uh, really important. Yeah, well, I mean, it's, it's, allowing, it's allowing yourself the emotion and the feeling to have great days and bad days but still not become them and and just realize that they're just another stepping stone mm -hmm. you know and I, that's just that's the you know and that's that's so much the reason why so many people get a coach is because it's my opportunity it's my, not my opportunity it's it's it gives them the opportunity to have someone which is me, you know, if I'm their coach, to remove any kind of shame or frustration or feeling terrible about themselves by allowing them the day off or by telling them that it's okay or telling them that things are going to get better or telling them that, you know, they're not in this alone or, you know, hey, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, it's like not in like a, not in like a, I'm, you know, trying to squash your dreams thing. Um, but you know, hey, like, can I can I help you along the way? And it just, it, like you said, like don't try to stay even keel, you know, and try to stay don't don't never get too high, and never get too low, is you know is the is the biggest thing is never get too high, never get too low, and then when you are when you are really really high, remember all the lows, you know, and be grateful, and then when you get really really you know you really. And you get really, really low. Think of, you know what? But I've been here and I've done that, and I've come back from it, and realize, you know, and at the same time, be grateful, um, because you know, I, if, at least in my case, the my highs seem so much higher because I know how low is my lows have been, mm -hmm. and vice versa. You know, I know, I never want to have those holes again. There's, you know, to or those those lows again, you know, as low as I've been in before. But I know that I can overcome obstacles. I know that I can, um, you know, that I don't, for me, I don't have an excuse because I've been through worse, you know, it's like, you know, but at the same time, it's like, okay, that doesn't also give me the reason to never forgive myself for just taking a day. You know what I mean? Yeah, you can't. Um, it's just it's all it's all big picture, and you just have to remind yourself. It's like, oh, well, you don't have an excuse. You've had it rough, or or you don't know what it's like, or it's like, listen, it's all, it's just it's everything is so much prisoner of the moment in our lives that you know, you always want to stay present, but not be a prisoner of the moment, mm -hmm. and that is really hard to do. You know, one of the things I always. Um, hear about and when I do it, it it really does work it's sort of this um, I, I'm a big proponent of writing and kind of journaling out your thoughts and just like clearing the air in your own head through making you think about it and just uh, even without purpose necessarily but like maybe the overall arching thing is I heard about these like gratitude journals where people get up and the first thing they do is they remind themselves of what they are grateful for mm -hmm. And I, I, I'm a huge proponent of that. I don't always follow that, like most mm -hmm. things in my life. But uh, those are little things that really do kind of start your day on the right um, mindset. You oh, know, it's for like, sure. Because you can't. It one of the you know like an analogy I always use is like all right if you're gonna um, let's say you're gonna paint your house you know you go out there and you want to paint it a different color and you get out there and it takes maybe three or four days and you paint it and you're and you step back and you're like wow. I just did something. I mean, that you can really mm -hmm. see what, what's going on there. But if you spend like uh, two weeks or a month inside your house, like changing the plumbing out and rewiring the house and, you know, doing the, the infrastructure of things that aren't visible, mm -hmm. it's really a lot more difficult to grasp progress in that regard. But it's probably more important. You know, well, it is more important for sure. But it's kind of the same thing. Like when you're working on your... Uh, you know your mind and your body and your soul and all these sorts of things it's not tangible a lot of times unless you kind of make it tangible through 
writing about it and reminding yourself about it and actually putting it on paper. And I think that's probably the, the key behind therapy and things like that too because it makes you explain how you're feeling and where you came from and then you can kind of reflect and say, hey, well, you know what? Actually, I am making progress. But if you just sit there and stew it in your own head, it's so hard to actually see it and feel it sometimes because you get kind of confused up there and until you sort it out and actually you know, make it more concrete it's difficult to keep an eye on and remember the progress you've actually made. Well, and I mean, at least I have done this for a long time. I don't do it every day, but I do it frequently. Is like you call, like you just go on a gratitude walk, you know, do them, in the, do them early in the morning, take your dog for a walk and just list all the things that you're grateful for. And it's funny that when, if you ever want to take yourself out of pity or sorrow or jealousy, list things you're grateful for because it for me at least it it immediately removes any kind of you know uh comparison whether it's good or bad to somebody else because when you list the things that you're grateful of you understand the things that you have that there are you know for all the all the specific things that you're grateful for there are very few other people in the world that would probably name that list Mm mm-hmm but when it comes to everything else we do in life, it's all about well, look what he look look what he has, and I don't want that. Or, but if you listed it, if you once you finally got it, would you even list it? You know, like if you or so and so is uh, you know you know has this, you know so and so has, you know, uh, you know whether it's this job or or this life or you know whatever. And come here, girl. Sorry, she's a little lonely down here. Come here, go to your bed. Um, you know, it's Thanksgiving. <laughs> um, and, uh, hey, go to your bed, girl. Come here. It's, uh, you know, but if you, it's like, is that is that for my, is that something I'm going to be grateful for down the road? Or do I just want it to want it? Or am I just comparing myself to, just to compare myself? Mm-hmm. Um it's like, but you know, the th- most things in life, like if you really get down to like the grateful, grateful stuff, are things that really only you can have anyway, and not anybody else. And and that's like you know I think kind of the the, the genesis behind you know being thankful and showing yourself grace and and being thankful for everything instead of resentful or negative or over analytical. I mean, that's like a huge thing I deal with with athletes is just so analytical, you know, and they're just so numbers. And I'm like, you know, name me something you're grateful for. Mm -hmm. It won't be, it won't be numbers, (laughs) you know, it'll be experiences. And that's, you know, the more you obsess about other things, like the more, the more detailed, the less, um, you know, the less you begin to appreciate and even remember how great um, these experiences can be that we can have in this sport and then with people that we meet um, and races and, and training and all that and all that kind of fun stuff. Yeah, you get this. We, we talk to a lot of different ranges of um, triathletes and from beginners to Kona qualifiers and things like that. And I think the majority of us uh, sort of fall in the in the sort of in that middle where you know you're you where you can't really recognize progress as readily. Mm-hmm. And to me, that's exactly why I think you need to list that sort of stuff because even I like, but you know, when I started, it was sort of like, bam, you know, this is good. it all starts kind of comes at you so quick, and you get. You do your first, uh, like Erica's thing, the sprint, and the next thing you know, you're off to a half Ironman, and you're doing this, and you're just like blown away and amazed by what you've been doing. And then all of a sudden, it hits is like, okay, you keep doing amazing stuff, but it just isn't like, you know, as electrifying or whatever in your mm-hmm. brain, so you forget it. So I think it is good to look back. I mean, I do that all the time when I'm like looking through old stuff that I've done. I'm like, wow, I actually have done a lot of stuff, but you sort of get right. numb to it. Yep. And it's, I mean, I, I don't always like, I'm, I don't like the idea of always like, you know, living in the past, but there is something to be said for recognizing where you've come from. Oh, for sure. 
and and keeping an eye on that, you know, and, and realizing that, man, you know, you might be sitting here today and you struggled yesterday or the whole week with some workouts or whatever, but just because you haven't, like, set the world on fire, you're still doing amazing things and you've had incredible progress, most likely, in at least the sport. And, you know, can you translate that into other areas of your life and you know, it's like us with the with the, with the beginning of the podcast, you know, it sort of started taking off. And now we're in this, you know, phase again where it's like, wow, you know, it's kind of been steadily growing. It's not as dramatic a lot of times, but we have to remind ourselves that we put in, you know, this is 114th podcast or something like that. And mm -hmm. it's a pretty good track record, you know, and uh, um, that's a good thing. Uh, we're doing the right stuff, you know, at least as far as you know moving in the direction that we want to go in and um there's a lot of people that we hear from all the time that uh amazingly <laughs> you know we have resonated with them and it and it touches their lives in some ways and i mean those kind of things are there you know and um it's i'm not saying like get super high or super low one way or the other but it's just a reminder of like the steady slow burn that uh, we're on in not only this, but just our lives in general. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think that's probably even a great place to wind it up. Is that you know you said about you know just being in a bad place, mm -hmm. and there is nothing wrong with being in a bad place. Nothing. Mm -hmm. There is a lot wrong with choosing to live there. And, you know, we do that. We find ourselves in these, in these bad places and we immediately see our future in this bad place. You know, like, like, you know, bad places aren't fluid or they're not like just pit stops along the way. But you have a choice to stay in that bad place or to just be there for a minute mm -hmm. or a day or even a week or even, I mean, hell, I was in there for a long time. But, you know, it's you have the opportunity to leave it. And there are people out there that will be more than happy to walk you through or walk you out that door to a better place. Um, and even in the thing is, is even once you walk out that door and you get somewhere else where you're happy, is you're never is to, is to not be content. Again, being in that good place to try to always get to a better place, but make it a place that's just your own. Make it a place that, that you see in your mind and your heart that you can be grateful of and thankful of. You know, and if you ever get – my grandfather always told me this. Like, if you, ever, if you ever get really, really, really ambitious and always want to be achieving more or doing more or, you know, making more money or doing this, he said, step back and, and imagine what you're going to tell your grandkids – that you accomplished and if and it won't be about money and it won't be about you know all these kind of things that you know a lot of people talk about it'll be about the the things that you did that matter the most and none of them will it'll they'll be stories they mm -hmm. won't be accomplishments and that's how you should live your life is look at as them as stories and journeys instead of you know a resume yeah and if, i think if we can always remember that and be grateful um, of both the good times and the bad times, because it makes us who we are, and it makes it has made just so many ridiculously awesome people that we've met, like you said, that have sent us emails or, or reached out to us. And I mean, my life has been enriched. I mean, a million times full <laughs> from the amount of people I've been able to work with this year that I've become. You know, just really, I've, I've made more true friends and relationships in the last six months than the last six years. Um, and it's something, you know, and, and uh, the good times and the bad times with all of them. And it's something that I'm uh, incredibly grateful for. And, and I um, look forward to continuing to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you're right. The experiences are where it's at. It's, uh, mm -hmm. it's you know, we've experienced many similar things together in triathlon and but triathlon doesn't define you you know it uh, mm -hmm. it's a part it's an experience that uh, we've all decided to go through and it enriches us in many many ways and but there's so much more and you know 
taking what we can get from the sport and transferring it into other areas and doing things like, you know, Stuart and Meg did. They raised thousands of dollars for, you know, people that, you know, don't have it or whatever. Mm -hmm. Maybe. I mean, those are the experiences that this may create, you know, um, and new friends, like you're saying, in this community. And it's just like, to me, yeah, that's it, man. We had a, you know, I just talked to one of our athletes today for the first time and it was like we've known each other forever and we just connected and how great is that to build friendships yep. and uh future connections he's coming to camp with his buddy and um, he's staying at my house and you know it's just that you know just what what, what more can you build experience wise in your life it's good stuff man yeah it's good stuff so uh what do you got you're gonna go uh to be doing the uh, Alabama Thanksgiving with Allie's side in the morning, and then my side in the evening, and then off to Virginia for uh, Friday to Sunday with her extended family for uh, some kind of a family reunion or something. Oh, you got it going on this weekend. Yep. Hitting the road. Hitting the road, man. Yeah, Taking you the are. show on the road. Right on. No uh, Boulevard Bolt or anything like no that? No Boulevard Bolt, man. I'll, I'll, we're going to do a little family run tomorrow morning before we... Uh, head down to her uh, parents' house, but yeah, they, they they start too late for us for our day, so we're gonna we'll just keep on uh, keep on doing our thing, and uh, you know we'll shine our light later. All right. So. Um, yeah, if you've uh, stumbled upon us today and you want to get more involved with the community, we have a closed Facebook group you can find through searching Crushing Iron Group on Facebook. There's uh, hundreds of people in there with great attitudes and move in the right direction and supportive cast uh, to, you know, be there when when you need them kind of thing. And uh, mm -hmm. we've got that. We've got crushingiron.com, which has all of our stuff, including camps and uh, coaching. If you want to get involved with that, if you're ready to get a coach, check it out. We've got pricing on there, the whole, you know, whole deal. It's transparent. Everything's there. Videos. Yep, all there. there. And... Uh, and have a happy Thanksgiving. Yeah. Have a happy Thanksgiving from the C26 triathlon team. Crush some whatever you eat. Exactly. <laughs> Crush whatever you eat. I like it. <laughs> All right, man. Well, have a good one. You too, man. See you, buddy.